What is going on guys? Money Webby here back again on Friday with a nice 10 game slate here tonight. I got my money six, six of my favorite plays on the slate. So before we get going, slap up that like button. If you're ready to win some money here tonight, get some good juju going. Let's try to get over 100 likes on this video. Thank you so much if you can do that. Um, last night, it was a weird night because of the Raptors and Spurs game. That game was projected to be the closest game of the night. And it was the only one, of course, that was a blowout. Um, and of course, Kawhi Leonard wasn't able to get as many stats as I was looking for. He was able to score pretty well, um, but somehow only had one rebound. Didn't really play in the fourth quarter. DeMar DeRozan was smashing in that game too, which really sucked. And Siakam was playing pretty well. Um, he honestly was a kind of flirting with a triple-double. He did get in foul trouble in the end of the first half, um, but that could have been a much bigger night if that game did stay close, which really sucked. And then, of course, I was hoping for a blowout in that Rockets-Warriors game. It was looking good at half. I mean, the Warriors were up by, like, 17 points. James Harden was struggling. So the fade, or I, recommended, or I didn't recommend him in the plays, was looking smart. Uh, but then, of course, in the third quarter, they caught fire. They, like, couldn't miss a shot. Um, even friggin' Gerald Green, Austin Rivers, they were like going off. I did recommend Clint Capella who was going off, but James Harden really just kind of saved his night in the third quarter. And then, of course, it went to OT, so that really bit me in the ass with that. So let's see if we can have some better luck here tonight, though, with the money six. So on tonight's slate, the top two guys um, both carry some risk. I mean, Giannis going against the Hawks, I could see that easily being a blowout. I'd be very surprised if that game stays close enough for Giannis to play four quarters. So I'm not paying 11700 for a guy that only could get in three quarters of work. And then Russell Westbrook, I mean, not a bad price for a guy that can fill it up, but he's really been struggling with his jump shot. So it's tough to imagine him scoring that many points um, unless he just drives and hits some more jump shots in that game. Um, so I don't think it's worth paying. I mean, you can definitely pay it for Westbrook. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit more balanced approach here with guys that all have great upside. So for my first play, uh, DeAndre Ayton here at 7,800. I love t attacking the Clippers with centers because of their defense down low. is very suspect, and they've kind of been rotating guys in and out. So they don't really have that, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for. They really don't have that like kind of good communication, I would say. It seems like they got like Boban in one night. Gortad in one night, and then you got Harrell playing good amount of minutes, and he's on a true center. So I think DeAndre Ayton can really go off in this matchup. I believe he had 45 or so drafting points against uh, the Clippers last time out. He did struggle the first game against them, but he played really well in uh, the second affair against them and the Clippers. That's kind of one of the better police to attack, so attack them. They've been really bad defensively over the past month or so. And uh, this game is projected to be a 233 point total. Uh, it should be fairly close. The Clippers, like I said, not playing very well recently. The Suns have been keeping it close in some high scoring games recently. Uh, they kind of, what is that, like a 260 point total against the 76ers the last time, and then 240 against the Nuggets. And Aiden's really been playing well recently. I mean, he dropped 33 and 14 against Denver and 18 and 11 against a good defensive uh, Joel Embiid. Uh, so he's been playing pretty well. Some huge upside. I think this is another game where he can carry some big upside. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my first guy. I'm going to go with Brandon Ingram here at 6,800. I'm assuming Kuzma doesn't play in this spot um, because he he left the game in the first half with a back contusion. Then he actually got an MRI for it. So I feel like it's risky enough uh, where they'd want to just hold him out. I mean, he's a young piece of this team. They seem to be exercising some caution with LeBron. And I would see them doing the same with Kyle Kuzma. And this is a good opportunity uh, to show off Brandon Ingram if they want to use him as a trade chip. And uh, to show off Lonzo Ball if they want to make any moves in the future for a guy like Anthony Davis. So perfect game here for Brandon Ingram to have super high usage. Play a ton of minutes. I mean, the last three out of four games, 41, 39, and 38 minutes. Uh, in the last two, he's gotten a good amount of draft game points, 39 and 48. And he can kind of play that uh, point guard or like point forward kind of role. Um, with the assist total up and also the rebounds up with Kyle Kuzma out. So at 6,800, I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. I'm assuming Kuzma is out. If he plays, um, uh, hopefully we get word if he's like 100% to go. 
Um, but I'm assuming he doesn't play, like I said. But if he plays, I might pivot off Brandon Ingram, so I'll tweet out about that. And for my third guy, I'm going to go with another center here. Hassan Whiteside at 6,800. Uh, another really good matchup here against a bad defensive team against centers. They allow a ton of rebounds. Uh, they get beaten up on the offensive glass. Two centers, and that's really Hassan Whiteside's game. I mean, he has huge rebounding upside, I think, in this matchup. And if for whatever reason the guy just comes to play at home in Miami, he's averaging 10 more drafting points than average, plays some more minutes. And uh, he had a solid game against uh, the Wizards earlier this year, um, even against Dwight Howard there. And Thomas Bryant, he's okay defensively, not as good as Dwight Howard, though. And Thomas Bryant's been playing a ton of minutes, so he's going to be a little bit tired in some of these games. He's not really used to playing 30-plus minutes, so that means the offensive center can really take it to him. Alex Len had a double-double against them last time out in like 25 minutes or so. Uh, so it's definitely a beatable matchup. I think Whiteside can drop a double-double and also fill it up with the blocks and stuff like that against Thomas Bryant. He's going to want to beat up a younger guy, show off his worth. He's been struggling recently, uh, but we all know he has that huge double-double upside. I think he's due for a big one here. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my third guy. Then I'm going to go with Gordon Hayward. Definitely a risky play. This guy is just off and on, it seems like, night and night out. Still recovering from that injury. Uh, still kind of going through the motions in some sense, but it seems like he is getting closer to his form when he was on the Utah Jazz. I mean, I watched the whole entire game here, like the highlights to see if Gordon Hayward is looking better. I think he definitely is. I mean, he seems more, this more, uh, this more, um, what is the word I'm looking at? He seems more confident. That's the word. I'm more confident in his body. And uh, it seems like he wants to be more aggressive. I listened to his interview as well. He's like, I want to be more aggressive going forward. I think he's definitely starting to do that. I mean, 18 uh, shots his last time out in 32 minutes. And uh, Kyrie Irving, he's going to be out here again. So that means Gordon Hayward going to have some more assist opportunities in this game. He had five last time out. And I think he'll definitely be able to get more rebounds than one that he got last game. So I think he can drop like 20, over 20 points. Uh, maybe around five rebounds and around five assists again in this game and get maybe a block or a steal, drop around 30 to 35 drafting points in this spot and kind of be that go-to guy maybe in the offense. Yet again, they want to get his confidence going. And uh, Marcus Mor Morris is also questionable. So if he doesn't play, Gordon Hayward will have some more possible rebounds with that and uh, scenario as well and some more possible jump shots again here. I think he'll put up uh, double-digit shots get his confidence going, be more aggressive, and just kind of continue to make that progress going forward. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my fourth guy. They want to go with Lou Williams here at a 6,700. Really good spot. Like I said, a high-scoring game. And he's finally getting the starter minutes recently, uh, 31, 27, and 31 minutes the last three. And that's really great for a guy like Lou Williams. He's super um, just – super aggressive and super involved whenever he's on the court. He averages a good amount of fancy points per minute. Uh, so if he's getting around 30 minutes, I think he can have a huge game here. He typically does well against these, in these like high-scoring, kind of up-tempo kind of games. And at 6,700, great matchup. Like him a lot here. I think he can honestly get up to 40 draft game points in this spot. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my fifth guy. Then for my value guy, I'm kind of going on a limb here again. Um, I'm assuming that Ricky Rubio sits for this game. I mean, they're going against the Cavs. They really don't need Rubio. Um, I think he'll probably just be held out in this game. I mean, Dante Exum, he played extremely well in the game where uh, Rubio sat the other night against the Knicks. He dropped a 13-13. and 13. They blew it the Knicks. He only got 26 minutes and still dropped 33 drafting points. So I think he honestly could get upwards of 30 minutes if this game does stay close enough. And uh, he honestly, even if Rubio plays... He could still be a kind of contrarian play, like if they rest Rubio a little bit earlier, if they're up big, and then XM could get around 20 to 25 minutes, even with Rubio in the lineup. So a 3,900, an extremely good value, especially if Rubio is out. And like I said, I'm hoping, hoping and imagining they rest them because the Cavs are just so bad this year, and XM has huge value whenever he's kind of getting some more run and more active and more involved in the offense. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. As my final guy, so you got a great amount of money left over, 6,300, and all guys, and huge kind of boosts and opportunities with some injuries and uh, some more situations where it's going to be high scoring and up tempo, like that Clippers uh, Suns game. So you got Brandon Ingram, Lou Williams, Gordon Hayward, 
Don, um, Dante Exum, DeAndre Ayton, and Hassan Whiteside. All those guys can return over six times value. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Slap a like if you did. Let's try to get over 100 likes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully we don't avoid a huge name from Russell Westbrook like we did with James Harden. I mean, you definitely can make a, um, a case for throwing in Westbrook in this lineup. Like if you just do something like that and then maybe go value the last two. Or if you kind of swap out Blue Williams, throw in Russell Westbrook there and kind of fill it out like that. I think it's definitely possible. Um, but I just kind of prefer how I made my build with that lineup. So good luck here tonight. Um, hope you win some money. Subscribe if you haven't already to continue to get these NBA videos. Uh, and we'll see you back here again next time. Good luck, guys.